Hi, right, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we're talking about cylinder area versus piston area. So, there's the shittest piston you've ever seen. Like so. Um, if you actually look over the years of, uh, just say like the Yamaha R1 or something like that, you'll see that they have started to go more and more and more and more over square and this is all to do with crankshaft um, you know your actual stroke length at the crankshaft acceleration distance traveled and so on and so forth and to maintain the same cc they then have to broaden the piston diameter because their stroke is shorter it's not just that though the fact of the matter is is just imagine that we have a giant stroke or just a stroke full stop. This is our swept volume and this is our compression, you know, this is our compression volume up at the top and our clearance volume, that's the proper term for it. And this is just so this ring here, that's where the piston gets to and this is the entire combustion chamber when ignition occurs. So this is when the piston, like I said, this is greatly over exaggerated. Now, the reason why you also want to go to uh, larger pistons is because is if we take this area and all of this back wall and obviously it wraps around to the front that entire area um, and then calculate the piston area then if we go to we, you know we'll, we'll have a number a ratio of this area to this area and that'll be a ratio if we have a smaller piston to the same stroke and we calculate this area and all this area here you'll find that the ratio for this is a smaller ratio than it is for this so you've got to remember that um, you know we combust fuel combustion occurs that releases energy this energy is in the form of heat uh, that raises the pressure and then pressure is applied to the surface area that it's exposed to so if we have a small piston a small piston diameter here versus all this diameter it's a smaller ratio than this um, surface area here so you want to try and make as much of your piston uh, as much of the surface area piston than anything else because any energy uh, any pressure not energy any pressure that's forcing against the top of your combustion chamber or your cylinder walls is wasted you know, all you're doing is just trying to squeeze your piston, your cylinder out, which is just, it's just wasted energy. This is why, you know, people instantly say, oh, combustion engines are, you know, they're only about, internal combustion engines are only about 30% efficient. Yes, well, one of the first reasons is, is that all this pressure is used to push against stuff that you don't want it to push against. There's a lot of light and a lot of sound that is wasted. You know what I mean? And these are things that, it doesn't matter what you do, it's very hard to get around. So let's not dick about, let's do the math. So we'll have a circle and we'll call this 80 millimetres and we'll say that our clearance volume there, we'll say the clearance length here is 2 millimetres, let's just say that's 2 millimetres. So if we do that, that's 40, was it pi r squared? 40 squared times pi. I'm not doing that in my head. So that's. 5,027, so that's millimetres, that's millimetres squared, that's the area of this, and then we obviously times the whole thing, well no, we don't times the whole thing for the volume, if we wanted the volume we'd times it by 2 millimetres, but we don't want the volume, what we want is our piston diameter is this, so piston diameter is 5,027, and then obviously our head, our head um, diameter area, should put area, area, is 5,027 if we had a flat head. And then what we've got to do is we've got to calculate this. Well, our 80, our 80 millimetres there, uh, we need to times that by um, 3.142, which is the ratio for uh, circumferences. So we times that together, and of course I'm going to cheat, I'm going to fucking do that. Uh, times 3.142, oof. 
that's 25136. We times that by 2. Times that by 2. It's 502. So we've got 502.72 there. And then we plus these two together. What's that? It's 5,500 and I can't see 29. Well, 30. Let's put 30. So that's that. So the ratio between piston area and this is, what's that, 5072, oh, ah, fucking hell, 5027 divided by uh, 5530, so that's 0 0.9 to 1. So our piston is 0 0.9 times the size you know, it's 0 0.9 times uh, the size of our um, enti our entire surface area of what's remaining of that cylinder. If that makes sense. So we've got that number, our 0 0.09 for this cylinder up here. I've worked out. I'm just doing the volumes and all the rest of it. So we want to keep the compression ratio the same. We want to basically just change um, our diameter of our piston. So these can be regarded as like for like. So the volume in here and the volume in here are very, very similar. They're around about 10 cc. It's 10 cc, 10 point, 10.56 for this, 10 point, I think it was 10 point something for that. It's really quite close. So there's 10 cc in each of these. So that's why this is 3.6 instead of two millimeters. Put our units in. So we want to find out the relationship between the piston diameter and the surface area of the rest of this. Now the piston surface area compared to the rest of the surface area inside the cylinder. So to do that obviously we do 30, uh, 30 or 30 squared times pi again which is 30 times 30 times 3.1 oh, fucking hell times 30 times 30 times 30 times 3.142 equals so that's 2827 that's the piston area or the cylinder head area which whatever one you want to look at it so that's millimeters squared so we've got this number and then we need to so that's our piston surface area and that's our um, cylinder head surface area if we had a flat cylinder head the next one is 60 uh, so 60 there times 3.142 gives us our circumference so that's 18852 we then times that by our 3.6 times that by 3.6 because that's our basically we're making a strip and that's 678672 so we get rid of all this shite that's our surface area of this this is our surface area of this we put these two together, so we plus two, eight, two, seven. We've got three, five, zero, five millimeters squared. That's the surface area of this entire, basically the top and the whole wall all the way around, just not the cylinder, the piston. And our piston is this, because it's the same as the surface area, top or bottom, it doesn't matter. This is the rest our combustion chamber size basically so we've got our piston surface area and we've got everything but the piston surface area so this is the top and the sides the strip that's all the way around so basically what you can see you can't see the piston there and if we just take our um, 2827 and we divide that by uh, 3505 we get a number that's 0 0.8 so basically what we'd be looking for is we'd be looking for a one-to-one -one. A one-to-one -one means the piston surface area is the same size as the top of our combustion chamber. The only way you could do that is if you had this that was zero. So basically it's just two cylinders laid flat on top of each other and the relationship would be one-to-one. -one. Obviously we can't have that because we have to have some kind of volume so combustion can occur. So this has to be a number. If you have a piston with the same compression ratio, that's very important. These two examples have the same compression ratio. As you can see, 
this one here with a broader piston is closer to the golden 1.1 which we can never theoretically ever have versus our smaller piston versus um, our smaller piston but a larger clearance volume so as i said 1.1 is what we're trying to hit if you have a broader piston then you can basically reduce the size it's quite simple really if you have a broader piston you can fit the same amount of volume in because this value on your side your clearance height um, shrinks you know what I mean because we're trying to you know it's just like spreading out your cake mix <laughs> kind of thing you know what I mean if you're allowed to go broader you can make it thinner and if you can make it thinner basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to remove this side wall as much as possible as I've said it always has to exist we cannot have a one-to-one -one, um, and this is what we try and do. In diesels, they actually have combustion chambers that are in the piston, so that at least most of the certain or a lot greater uh, surface area is in the piston than it is in the combustion chamber. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.